Hey everyone, I've got a video on preoperative evaluation that was almost ready to be posted, but a lot of people are suddenly talking about a brand new topic today, monkeypox. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Eric Strong. I'm a clinical associate professor at Stanford and a practicing hospitalist. So why are folks talking about an extremely rare esoteric virus? Well, there's been a handful of cases and small clusters crop up recently in places that generally don't see monkeypox, including a single patient in Massachusetts who may have contracted the virus during a trip to Canada. There are also uh, patients in Spain, Portugal, and the UK. Of course, COVID is at the forefront of everyone's mind. You know, we all remember January 2020 when COVID cases, then called novel coronavirus 2019, started accumulating in China. And the vast majority of scientists and public health officials were of the mindset that this new virus was serious and it needed to be uh, you know, rapidly studied. But virtually no experts predicted a pandemic killing millions and transforming the global, global economy. So, uh, you know, it's perfectly understandable for the public to be skeptical of health officials currently downplaying the risk for monkeypox and instead wonder, you know, hey, is this, is this going to be COVID 2.0? You know, I understand, I, I get it, but there are a number of really strong reasons this is unlikely to become a global public health crisis. Uh, I'm going to, you know, for the rest of the video, I'm going to discuss what monkeypox is, how it's spread, what the symptoms are, and what's its treatment. Uh, so, as already implied, monkeypox is a virus, specifically something called an orthopox virus, and it's genetically related to smallpox, the way that SARS-CoV-2 virus is genetically related to the original, much deadlier SARS virus of 2002. Monkeypox is called this because it was first isolated in sick monkeys in 1958. Just like SARS-CoV-2 has different strains, monkeypox also seems to have two distinct strains that haven't seemed to have mutated too much over time and which are predominantly located in separate regions of Africa. The strain from West Africa is less virulent than the one from Central Africa. Despite monkeypox and chickenpox having similar names and a similar rash, they're, they're otherwise quite dissimilar. Now, the first cases of monkeypox in humans were discovered in Central Africa in the 1970s among individuals who had been exposed to small wild animals in the, in the forest, like squirrels and monkeys. But it's now believed that monkeypox has probably been sporadically infecting humans for thousands of years. And this brings us to the first reason to be reassured that monkeypox is not the next COVID. It's, it's not a new disease. In fact, in 2003, there was a small outbreak in the American Midwest that was spread by pet prairie dogs who had been housed with rodents, in, uh, rodents imported from Ghana before being sold. You know, over a two-month period, 71 human cases were identified. While some patients were uh, requiring of hospitalization, there were no deaths, and most importantly, there was no confirmed person-to-person -person transmissions it appears that most, if not all, cases were acquired through direct phys physical contact with an infected animal, uh, including bites and scratches. Now, we know from outbreaks in Africa, where the disease is, mo is very modestly more common, that person-to-person -person transmission can occur via respiratory droplets, but transmissibility is relatively low. While the general guideline in defining a COVID exposure has been close contact for uh, with, a, with a known case for at least 15 minutes, for monkeypox, the CDC considers a close contact to be one with a known case for at least three hours. You know, unlike COVID or the flu or the common cold, this is not the kind of disease that you're going to pick up from the person standing next to you in the grocery store checkout line. You know, it's substantially less contagious. Now, there is a huge caveat to that, though. Direct contact with an associated skin lesion uh, that actually is enough to transmit the infection. This brings me to the manifestations of monkeypox. Because there have been relatively few cases over the years, we don't have the same volume of observations that we have for other viral illnesses. But from what we have observed, common symptoms appear to be fever as the most common initial manifestation. Uh, this is followed by a generalized rash consisting of lesions 
that progress through a specific uh, series of stages. You know, they start as flat macules, then raised papules, then clear fluid filled vesicles, and finally pustules before the pustules scra uh, scab over and fall off. And the full progression and resolution of the rash takes between two and four weeks. You know, it, it looks similar to the rashes of smallpox and chickenpox, though with the latter, the individual lesions are all at different stages, while regarding smallpox, short of the potential for state-sponsored bioterrorism, it's otherwise been eradicated from the planet. Now, uh, patients also develop lymphadenopathy or multiple swollen lymph nodes, a headache, and myalgias, or generalized muscle aches. Uh, the incubation period from animal exposures is about one to two weeks. You know, because person-to-person -person transmission is so uncommon, we actually don't really have a, a great sense about what the incubation period is from respiratory droplets. We don't know if it's the same, but there isn't any reason right now to suspect that it's dramatically different. Regarding the diagnosis of monkeypox, the virus can be directly visualized via electron microscopy of, of scapings of skin lesions, though according to the World Health Organization, the best diagnostic test is PCR of the fluid from an unroofed skin lesion, which would need to be conducted at a highly specialized lab such as the WHO or CDC. The lack, in fact, you know, the lack of uh, easily available diagnostic tests combined with its extreme rarity uh, in the West, it makes it that much more impressive that doctors were able to make the diagnosis, particularly in the isolated Massachusetts case. Treatment of monkeypox is supportive only, meaning IV fluids to maintain hydration since patients often are nauseous and vomit, are, are vomiting, um, and uh, antibiotics if secondary infections develop. There are a few drugs, uh, including some originally developed for smallpox, that may be effective against monkeypox, but none have ever been tested in humans who have this specific infection. Now, believe it or not, we actually sort of already have a vaccine against monkeypox. Observational data from prior outbreaks suggests that the smallpox vaccine is effective at both preventing infection as well as reducing symptoms in breakthrough infections. Now, although smallpox vaccines, they haven't been given to the public since the 1970s when the disease was eradicated, some governments, such as the United States, still stockpile doses in the event of bioterrorism. According to the CDC's website, they have stockpiled enough doses of smallpox vaccine for every American. So in summary, you know, why, um, why am I, you know, here in the U.S. not worried about smallpox, about, sorry, about monkeypox? Um, there, there's just a single U.S. case who appears to have acquired the disease in another country, you know, sorry, Canada. Um, the, the monkeypox virus is not new. We've known about it for 70 years. It's, its genome has been sequenced and the genetics and structure are already very well understood. Human to human transmission is uncommon and requires prolonged contact. As far as we know, and we'll get to that in a second. A uh, prior outbreak in the U.S. fizzled with fewer than 100 cases. While one of the two strains in Africa has a non-negligible 10% mortality rate, deaths are largely from a lack of sufficient supportive care, and no one in the prior U.S. outbreak died. We already have an effective vaccine, of which, apologies to my international viewers, uh, the U.S. already has hundreds of millions of doses in storage. And because of COVID, we currently have an unprecedented amount of attention being given to public health. However, having said all of that, why am I not ready to blow it off completely? Well, the medical establishment, in including myself, obviously got COVID quite wrong in the earliest days of that pandemic. Now, at the time of this, that I'm recording this video, the monkeypox story here in the U.S. broke less than a day ago. Now, things can change. You know, these new cases could be from a new strain that's more transmissible or more virulent than the strains we already know about. You know, for example... Some news outlets are reporting that many of the current cases are being seen specifically in gay men uh, or men who have sex with other men, suggesting the possibility that sexual contact is playing a role in transmission, which would be entirely new for this disease. You know, there will likely be more new developments to come. So, you know, I am going to pay attention to the story over the next few weeks very closely, but at the same time, I'm not rushing out and getting a smallpox vaccine anytime soon. And there's, there's certainly no need for the general public to become alarmed. 
Anyway, uh, that's it for my this uh, this Mogi Pox hot take. You know, thanks for watching to the end, and I'll plan on posting that preoperative evaluation video in a few days.